Hello, dear ones. You are all welcome to today's lecture. In our previous um, discussions, we've been able to um, discuss into details synchronous generators. Today, we are going to focus our attention on synchronous motors. All right. When we say a motor, a motor is any device that converts electrical power or electrical energy to mechanical energy. So. Synchronous generator and synchronous motors, they all have the same physical appearance or construction. The only difference is the direction of uh, power flow. Okay, so in synchronous generator scenario, we are having mechanical energy that is converted to electrical energy. But for synchronous motor issue, we are going to have uh, electrical energy that is going to be converted to a mechanical energy. All right. So we know that the speed of um, the rotor is synchronous with the frequency of the electrical power in the alternator or the stator. All right. So we are saying that the speed of a synchronous motor is always um, proportional to the frequency of the power supply. All right. We know that Ghana will operate at a frequency of 50 hertz. All right. So if you have a synchronous motor and we connect it to this 50 hertz. All right. Irrespective of the load that we connect to it, the speed of this particular motor is never going to change. Okay, the only parameter that can cause the the speed of the motor to change is the frequency. All right, we know the frequency, um, then the speed relationship as um, given below. So we have uh, the frequency multiplied by 120 over p that will give us our speed, and we know that 120 and its p they are constant so the only variable here becomes our frequency so now let's move to the next thing and see the operations of synchronous motors synchronous motors as i said they have the same um construction just as the synchronous alternators that we discussed already so we can see that we have our two main parts the stator and then the rotor that's the rotating part the rotor once again contains the fault windings and then the stator contains the amateur windings a synchronous motor is a double excited device. The double excited means that we excite the field windings and then the stator windings separately. So we excite both. So now let's see. A field current IF of the motor produces a steady state rotor field, a magnetic field BR. So if you excite the field, we are going to have a magnetic field created on the rotor. We call that one BR. Okay, now if you excite the amateur windings with a three phase AC power, we are going to create a uniform rotating magnetic field called BS. So now we are having two different magnetic fields created in the motor our BR, which is a stationary magnetic field, and BS, which is a rotating magnetic field. So now what? causes the rotation. So let's uh, watch this particular video and we'll see how uh, the rotation is what achieved. So we can see that this is the construction of the motor. All right. We have our rotor and we have our stator. Okay. So the rotor contains the fault windings. So we can see that these are the fault windings. The brown brown um, conductors are the fault windings. And this is the um, stator or the amateur windings. So if you supply a three phase, um, phase A, phase B, phase C, sub, uh, AC supply to the stator windings, we are going to create a rotating magnetic field on the stator. Likewise, if we supply a field windings to the rotor, we are going to create a stationary root, uh, magnetic field on the rotor. All right. So now we have one field rotating and another field um, stationary. So, if we are able to provide a small mechanical or a small push to the rotor, take note, synchronous generate motors are not self-starting. If you just put on um, your AC supply and then your DC supply to the um, uh, rotor, the motor is never going to start unless you su supply it without a starter. Okay, so if you're able to supply it with a small push, you see that the rotor is the rotor fold is going to rotate alongside with the 
stator wine is or the stator field. So now you can see that we have our south pole on the root 2 and then we have north pole on the stator. So the north and the south are going to lock up. They are going to attract to each other and then they will move together. All right. So let's take a look at what is actually happening here. So now we have our north and the south north of the root 2 and south of the stator locked up and then we have the south of the root 2 here also and then the north of the stator also locked up so the two are going to lock up and move at the same speed okay that is how the root 2 the motor is going to operate so now you can see that both the fields are now locked and they are all moving at the same speed so that's the basic working principle of what a synchronous um, motor that we are discussing about over here so now the two magnetic fields are present in the machine and the rotor field tend to align with the stator magnetic field since the stator magnetic field is rotating the rotor magnetic field will try to catch up pulling the rotor okay so now let's take this simple analogy if you have a car that will attach a wheel to this particular car okay so the car is now um, pulling the wheel. See that at every instant, the wheel will try to catch up with the car. But since the car is moving, and then the wheel is uh, maybe chasing it, the two will be moving at the same speed. But the wheel can never catch up with the car. Okay, so at every instant, the distance between the wheel and then the car is going to be maintained constant. But the speed of the two is going to be the same at every instant. All right, so that's all that is happening over here. So we have the BR, which represents the field of the root 2, and then we have BS, which represents the field of the stator. The two are moving at the same speed, but the only difference over here is that there's this particular gap between the two. Okay, there's this particular gap between the two. All right, so this BR will tend to catch up with the BS, but it will never be able to catch up. All right, so but the two are going to move at the same speed. All right, so that's what is happening here. So now the torque that is being um, created over here is equal to this BS multiplied by BR multiplied by K. The K is a constant. We we'll talk about it later. So we are saying that the induced torque is equal to K multiplied by the magnetic field of the root two multiplied by the magnetic field created by or uh, in the stator windings. So that is going to be the torque in this. And over here, we are saying that the torque is now in anti-clockwise direction, as we can see here. So the BS is moving in this direction. So likewise, the BR is also going to move in the same direction. So the, le the larger the angle between the magnetic field, the greater the torque on the rotor of the machine. So the larger this particular angle, the angle between the BR and the BS, the greater the torque induced. So take note of um, that. So now let's take a, take a look at the uh, equivalent circuit of the synchronous motor. Okay, I initially said that the synchronous motor and the synchronous generator they have the same construction. The only difference is the direction of flow of what the power. In the synchronous generator scenario, we had the generator supplying electric current to the load or to the house. Um, the terminals but over here the direction of current is in the opposite direction now there's a current rather a, a supply to the motor all right so if you use a simple catch-off law to okay this is the fourth circuit okay so we will not use the full circuit to do our analysis our analysis is going to be on the amateur circuit so let's use a simple catch-off law to derive our equation so we can see that if you supply a particular voltage, V phase, this particular supply uh, voltage is going to be equal to the voltage drop across the amateur resistance plus the voltage drop across the amateur uh, the synchronous reactance plus our EA. That will give us this particular supply voltage. Okay, so we can see over here V phase equal to EA plus J XSIA plus R A I A. We can rewrite it making E A the subject. Then we have our V phase minus G X S um, I A minus I uh, R A I A. 
All right, so if you do remember the equation that we derived in the synchronous um, alternators or the generator, our EA was equal to V phase plus JXSIA plus RAIA. Over here, the current is moving in opposite direction, so the current becomes opposite to that of the synchronous generator equation. So the sign changes. Instead of plus, it tends to be negative. So we observe that this is exactly the same as the equation as the uh, equation of what the generator, except that the sign of the current term is reversed. Okay, as I rightly said. So this is all that we'll be discussing today. This is just the introduction to the synchronous motor. In our next lecture, we will look uh, more into the synchronous motor. We look at the power, the torque. Um, we will solve more examples, more questions. Then you understand the operations, how the motor is uh, being started. I made I clear to you that synchronous motors they are not self-starting, unlike uh, uh, DC motors and then the induction motors. So we we'll look at the various starting methods of synchronous motors. Um, into details. So until we meet again, uh, you continue to see that COVID-19 is real. So let's try to stay safe. This is Akanyele Bismarck. I say goodbye.